Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to use clones in Scratch, which is a very useful tool. To do so, we're going to create a virus simulator. There will be several green balls on the screen that will represent healthy people. And a few seconds later, an infected person will come in, which will be a red ball, and will start infecting everyone. Later on, we will transform this into a game by creating a blue ball that we will control by ourselves and will have to survive in a world full of infected people. So if you're ready, let's get started. As we usually do, let's begin deleting the cat and we're gonna paint one sprite with two costumes. So let's pick the circle. This one is gonna be green, press shift to make it regular with the select tool. Let's put it in the center. This is gonna be called green. And now right click, duplicate and pick red color and fill. Okay, this is gonna be called red. And here we have it. This is gonna be person. This is too big for the for the screen we have in Scratch, so let's resize it. Okay, 50 is okay, but I mean, this number is something you have to try and decide which one is best. And now let's go to the code. So, um, this one is the original sprite. This one is gonna start hidden, and we're gonna create clones of itself that will appear on the screen. So let's begin going to events, and when green flag clicked, we're gonna hide it. And we're gonna create the clones, which is in control. Here we have it. Create clone of myself. How many? Um, let's repeat it 10 times, maybe. Could be 12, 13, 20. You may try. And now, well, you know that every program in Scratch starts with an event. Events are represented with this little hut on the block. And they are all in events, except one, which is here. Well. There are a few more. This one is here. When I start as a clone, so here we're gonna explain the clones how they have to behave. First of all, clones, let me make it a little bit bigger. Clones are gonna go to a random position. They're gonna point in a random direction, but we don't have that block, so we have to pick this point in direction. And from operate operators, well, as you see, uh, the direction has to go from 180 up to negative 180. So pick random from negative 180 to 180. Also, in looks, we're gonna switch costume to green and now we are ready to show our clones. Look. I click on green flag, they pop up on the screen. Okay, so um, let's continue. We're gonna make the move, go into control in forever. We insert, um, it's here, move, maybe seven step steps, and even at bounce. So now they're gonna be moving on the screen. You see it's a very fluent movement. It looks beautiful, but now we need an infected person that comes in. That infected person is going to be the original sprite. So the program of the original sprite is here. But um, this is going to come in after three seconds, for example. So after three seconds, we want the original sprite to go to a random position, point in a random direction, switch costume to red, show and move. As you see, I have repeated all these blocks. So this is super fast. Right click, duplicate. We place it here. And the only thing we need to change is the costume. This is gonna switch costume to red. Let's try. <clears throat> Let's wait three seconds. And here we have the infected person. But for the moment, it doesn't have the ability of infecting anyone. Well, actually, it's because the clones 
do not have a program that detects if they are touching the red color. And that's super simple. That's gonna be also inside the forever loop because we want them to be constantly checking if they are touching red color. And we take this touching color a problem. As this is very small, this is tiny, using this tool to pick this red sometimes is not super precise. So what I recommend is that you change the size of this to the maximum, you pick this color, and now you return this object to the previous size. So now we have it, and if touching red color, they're gonna switch costume to red. Let's see if it works. Okay, it does. So the infection is expanding very quickly. All right, as you see, I try my game uh, from time to time to check if every step I'm doing is okay. That's super important when you're programming. And um, voluntarily, you could add uh, a counter to count the infected people. So you know that we do that with variables. We make a variable, infected, which is gonna be here, and we have to change a few things. For example, at the beginning of my game, I'm gonna set infected to zero. When the first um, infected person pops up, which is the, um, the original sprite, we're gonna change infected by one. And whenever they're touching red color, we change infected by one. Probably you think that I've done it very well, but I haven't, look. As you see, the infected variable uh, grows and grows constantly. Why? Because according to my program, whenever a clone, no matter what color the clone is, is touching something red, we increase this. So this is not what we want. We want to change infected people when a green clone is touching color red. So we need two conditions and we have to go to operators and take an end. I'm gonna put this inside, you know, we enter from the right and when it is white, we release. Same thing here. And how do we say that when this is green? Well, if we go to costumes, green is costume number one. So if that's in color red and let's go to looks, costume number equals one. We're gonna switch costume to red and change infected by one. Green flag, one, two, three. All right, as you see now, the infection expands as we want it. And this number does not increase anymore because although they are touching red color, costume number is not number one anymore. Okay, so well, this is finished and now we're gonna prepare the game. So we have to create another person, okay, another object, which is gonna be controlled by ourselves. So let's go here, paint, and what I recommend, so that the size of this is exactly the same as the other people, we go to person, select tool, select, control C to copy, we go here, control V to paste. And now, different color. Okay, the name of this is gonna be me. We go to the code, and um, do you remember the game we made about um, a cat chasing a mouse? Okay, this is the same thing we did with the mouse. When green flag clicked, forever, go to mouse pointer. Well, size should be 50 as well. Green flag, and you see that I can move it, but obviously, I'm not gonna get infected because that's not part of the code. So let's add two conditions. If I lose, what happens? If I win, what happens? 
When do I lose? I lose when I'm touching red color. So as we've done before, let's make it super big. Let's go back to me. Let's go to sensing. And if we are touching color red, this one, what is going to happen? Well, um, let me go back to the normal size. Okay, what is going to happen? Well, something simple would be stop all. But uh, I think it is better that we switch backdrop to a backdrop in which it says game over or something like that. Okay, indicating that we have lost. So let's go to backdrops, backdrops. And here we can add, for example, choose a backdrop from Galaxy, this one. I'm going to convert to vector. This is important when you want to insert other things. Zoom out, text, maybe red. Let's type in game over. Select tool and let's make it larger. As it is not very visible, I'm going to insert a square with a white fill and a red outline here. We send it backward one layer and there it is. Let me change the name of the costume, well, the backdrop in this case, which is um, game over. That's easier to identify. In backdrop number one, which is going to be play, I'm going to insert uh, a color here, for example, a fill between this green and white, that way. Well, as you see, the, um, the, the border is red, but it is outside the canvas, so it's not visible here. And one more to win. So to the backdrop, blue sky, this, let's make it red. You won. Select tool, make it big. Let's put it over here. And let's change the name. Victory. Okay, so um, now we have the three backdrops and now it's super simple. Let's go to me, code, and let's say if that's in red color, before we stop all, we're gonna switch backdrop to game over. At the beginning of my game, I'm gonna switch backdrop to play. And when I win, I will switch backdrop to victory. When do I win? When I have survived for some time. So operators, greater than, timer. And when timer is greater than, this is the number of seconds. Um, to, try, to try my game, I'm gonna set this to five because I don't wanna be playing for three minutes to show you that this is working. So green flag. And if I survive for five seconds, which is simple, you won. You won, but I have to stop all. So control, stop all. And that works perfectly. Some people will say, well, when you lose and when you win, I want to hide both this and the person. Because you will see that when I win, this time I'm gonna win for sure. We have this and this on the screen, and that doesn't look very well. So it's quite simple. We basically have to do this. In the case of me, when backdrop switches to game over, hide. When it switches to victory, hide as well. And when backdrop switches to play, I gotta show it. And the same here on the person. Okay, when backdrop switches to game over, hide. When backdrop switches to victory, hide. When backdrop switches to play, not show, because I don't want to show it at the beginning. Look, let me show you the code here. I don't want to show it this at the beginning. I said I wanted to hide it because we will show it when three seconds later. So this could be finished. Let's see. Now I'm gonna lose. Okay, 
and as you see, they both hide. You can hide the variable if you don't want it here anymore with this, okay? So this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as you know, if you have any question, use the comments, put it there or send me an email or whatever you need to. All right. See you guys. Bye bye.